If you have basic knowledge of chemistry, you must be aware about the term chirality or chiral molecules. Basically, if a molecule is chiral, it is going to show optical isomerism. That means there will be at least two molecules which will be exactly mirror images of each other. Uh, just like my left hand and right hand. These are mirror images of each other and at the same time, they are non-superimposable. That means I cannot superimpose each like one of them on the other. In the same way, any chiral molecule will have a set of these molecules and the set of this molecule is called enantiomers. Now, although enantiomers look physically similar, all the like molecular formula and all the other things are similar for both of them, the, there is a difference in how they are going to interact with the light. So, one of the enantiomer is going to interact with the plain polarized light and it's going to turn it into left side. Whereas the other enantiomer is going to turn that plane polarized light into right side. There is a Latin word which has been given to both of them. Uh, the one which turns the light towards the left side is called levorotatory. Whereas uh, the enantiomer which turns the light towards the right side is called dextrorotatory. So any chiral molecule is going to possess this property. If I show you a chiral molecule which is this uh, glucose molecule over here. Uh, this particular molecule is also chiral and uh, that's why it is going to show optical isomerism and that's why it will have another set of molecule that means it will have an enantiomer which will be uh, dextrorotatory if it is levorotatory. So if you try to synthesize this sugar molecule, uh, it's a glucose molecule but basically these are the monomers of sugar. So if I just call it sugar for the rest of the video, it won't make any difference. So yeah. If you try to synthesize this sugar molecule in uh, your laboratory, in that case, you have to mix two chemicals and in that case, there are high chances that you will get a, a mixture of 50-50 mixture of both the enantiomers, right, called as racemic mixture. Now, what if I tell you that in nature, that means if, if you try to get this sugar from the nature, which we generally do, we don't synthesize sugars for our daily use. We try to uh, like extract it from the natural sources like sugar cane or any plant. So what if I tell you that when you, when you extract this from the natural source, you are not going to get the other enantiomer. You are going to get just one enantiomer of it and that too dextrorotatory. So whatever sugar you have in your home, whatever sugar you have uh, purchased from the market is actually one enantiomer of the sugar, not the other one. It's, it's just the dextrose sugar which you have. You don't get the levo sugar. And that's what we are going to understand in this particular video that uh, why does nature is so much biased towards one of the enantiomer and the nature does not produces the other enantiomer. Let's try to find out that why exactly it is and what is the significance of this biasness in the nature. Uh, I hope you will get to know some new things in this particular video and if there is something which you find interesting, do subscribe to this channel and give a thumbs up to this particular video. As I was telling you that the nature is actually biased towards chiral molecules and towards a particular enantiomer of the chiral molecule. I've given you example of sugar, but it's not only in sugar, it's also in other molecules as well. For example, all the DNA, whatever DNA is there throughout the like throughout the in like organism, whatever DNA is found, those all DNA are chiral in nature and they are also dextrorotatory. So you only get a dextrorotatory DNA, you don't get a levorotatory DNA. Similarly, all the amino acids which you find in nature, which are building blocks of proteins, they all are actually levorotatory. So all the uh, amino acids are levorotatory. So these are some examples where you will find out that the nature is actually biased towards one of the enantiomer and this has a particular term in science which is called homochirality. So homochirality is a phenomena or you can say it's a, uh, it's a property by which in the nature or naturally synthesized molecules which are actually chiral, they will possess only one of the enantiomer and they are not going to possess the other enantiomer of it. So uh, let's try to understand that why exactly it happens and uh, like uh, why is it so important to have 
homochirality. Before going into that, let me tell you that homochirality is not only in the naturally synthesized compounds, it also it is also present in our day to day life like whatever things we have or whatever things we use like if they are chiral they are also some some way or the other they are homochiral for example screws okay whatever screw you see they all are chiral in nature and they all are made in such a way that if you rotate them clockwise you are going to tie the you are going to tighten up the screw and if you rotate them anti clockwise you are going to uh, like loosen up you don't find a screw which goes the other way around that means if you tighten or if you rotate it clockwise it is going to loosen it up it's not going to happen and that's why that is also a type of homochirality same goes for scissors a pair of scissors if you see they are always made for the right hand use like most of the scissors which you will find out they are made in such a way that a right handed person is going to be you is going to use it very easily try to use that scissor with your left hand you will find out very weird to use it and it will not work properly the paper will not cut uh, that uh, like uh, in that fluent manner as uh, a right hand use is going to do that so basically homochirality is uh, is around us and it's something which is related to efficiency let's try to understand that from where does this does this homochirality comes um, in the first place okay so as i said that if you have to synthesize this sugar molecule uh, you can mix two chemicals in your lab and you are going to get both like the dextro version and the levo version of them in about 50 50 percent but in nature it does not it is not synthesized like that two chemicals are not mixed to get it but they are synthesized by tiny molecular machines tiny machines which build this particular whole big molecule molecule by molecule means atom by atom it stitches it in a way so that it get formed it in a particular orientation or in a particular uh, like uh, uh, confirmation right so uh, that or those machines are called as enzymes now since the enzymes are themselves chiral in nature enzymes are also in the same way they have chirality so they will have a dextro version of them and they will have a levo version of them so an enzyme which is dextro in nature and if that enzyme is uh, like is being utilized in order to synthesize this particular sugar molecule then that uh, dextro rotatory enzyme is going to produce a dextro rotatory molecule as well now the question is ki uh, why do we have a dextro rotatory enzyme why not we have a levo rotatory enzyme uh, this part i will tell you at the end of this video because there are a lot of hypotheses re uh, related to this but let's try to understand that why this homochirality is so important or why uh, why do we have homochirality how is it helping us what is the significance of this homochirality so try to understand just like i told you that an enzyme is responsible for synthesizing this molecule in the same way there is an enzyme which is responsible to metabolize it to utilize this particular molecule to break these bonds take out the energy so that we can use it so once you take a sugar molecule it is going to get metabolized in your body a enzyme is going to be there which is going to break the bonds which is going to fetch out the energy and that energy you are going to utilize in your day daily work right now let's assume that we have both version of sugar molecule we have dextro sugar we have levo sugar so let's call it as d sugar and we have l sugar we have both the sugars now what happens that if uh, there are both these type of sugar then in that case to metabolize them you need both the types of uh, like enzymes as well in, inside your body so you need a uh, enzyme which is dextro also and which is levo also so let's say in our body we have both the types of enzymes also okay let's assume it so then what is going to happen that once you are going to take sugar now your body has to process it it has to separate out both the isomers dextro and levo separately and then it has to send the dextro one to the dextro enzyme and levo one to the levo enzyme so that it can it can get metabolized it can get consumed it can get formed like it can be converted into energy now here is a lot of time uh, you know consumption of the time there is a lot of inefficiency which is going to come what will happen if a dextro uh, sugar is going to go to the levo enzyme of course it is going to bump back that is not going to uh, metabolize it it is going to just reject it and it will send it to the uh, dextro enzyme so that it can synthesize it now here is lot of confusion and lot of inefficiency which comes and that's why uh, in order to keep all these things simple uh, there is just one version of uh, uh, 
sugar molecule which is synthesized by the enzyme and there is just one type of enzyme which is there in your body which is again going to metabolize it easily and your your body is going to absorb it so that is the benefit of homo homochirality that it makes the whole overall process very efficient now you might ask that how a human body uh, the, the enzyme inside the human body is going to understand that what type of molecule is going to come inside it and it is going to have a similar chirality enzyme inside it. So see all the living beings, all the species are basically interlinked to each other. Uh, if you talk about how life has started on earth, the hypothesis which we have that how the life has started, it started from simpler molecules which were earlier like amino acids and also after that uh, the DNAs were made and then life forms came. So from that starting itself, uh, a, a certain type of isomer was given more biasness over the other. Now that's where lot of hypothesis is there that why exactly a certain uh, like uh, a certain uh, enantiomer is more biased over the other because let's assume that we are in a pre uh, like in the in the initial time of earth when the life has just started on earth at that time uh, why the living beings have uh, you know it, it has accepted a uh, dextro uh, like a sugar or it has uh, accepted a dextro a DNA and a levo amino acid so why is it so so uh, there are a lot of hypotheses around it. Some people say that it is just in the case like let's say let's let's take a example of it. Let's say there are two types of rats in a room. Uh, one is uh, white in color and the other one is black in color. So we have two types of rat in the room and let's say the rate at which uh, they are catalyzing themselves or the rate at which they are uh, reproducing is different for both of them. So for black rat, let's say the rate is less it's it's slower to reproduce in number whereas uh, the number in which the white rat is reproducing is quite more so with uh, the number of time or with with the time you will see that simply after a certain amount of time the white rat are going to over number the black number like black rats right so in that case what will happen that after a certain time you are going to automatically reach a homochirality you will find out that the white rats are actually in majority whereas the black rats are very few and that's why that's where the biasness is going to come so that is one of the hypothesis that there is uh, like certain catalysis is fast for one of the enzyme whereas the other one is slower in that another hypothesis says that because the life on earth is so interdependent it's everything is a part of a food cycle or a food web on which something which is consumed by one is being uh, like uh, something which is consumed by a particular organism is being utilized by the other organism so in that particular way uh, everything has to be in sync and because that sync has to be maintained in that way one of that particular enantiomer is being selected and again why a particular one why dextro uh, sugars are only selected why not levo one so again uh, there is a lot of confusion regarding it there is no exact answer for this but yet uh, it is uh, like it is basically assumed that with time the catalysis has made all these things possible now just imagine that instead of taking a dextro sugar inside your like instead of consuming a dextro sugar you just consume a levo sugar so what is that going to do to your body so basically a levo sugar when it goes inside the body you will feel sweet because uh, your uh, like your sweet receptors are going to get sent uh, like they are going to get uh, that sensitive uh, sensation of that sweetness but once it goes inside your stomach your body will not be able to metabolize it the enzymes are not going to metabolize that levo sugar and that's why it is not going to get consumed inside the body that's why that can behave as a very good artificial uh, sweetener for us but the only problem is that synthesizing a levo sugar is very difficult so enantiomers are very important molecule actually so in our daily life we consume so many drugs so many molecules which have uh, different enantiomers and they behave differently with our body so it all depends upon this concept of homochirality that one of the uh, drug molecule or one of the enantiomer is going to be consumed by our body while the other one will not be consumed or if the other one is taken that is going to be harmful for us. Homochirality is a very important phenomena and it has a lot of significance why it is present and because of this homochirality there is so much of 
like so much of efficiency in the natural processes which we are going through and that is the reason why nature is always biased towards one of the enantiomer because it has to achieve that homochirality in order to maintain that uh, efficiency in the metabolism of different organisms and so that in less time or in in an efficient way you can produce energy that's the explanation which we have till now uh, there are other hypotheses regarding it i will give you link of them in the description of this video you, if you are interested enough you can read about them in detail over there so that's it from my side for this video i hope you understood something new you got something new to learn if you like this type of video do let me know in the comment section below i'll try to make more videos of this kind and that's it from my side thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next one hey guys so i teach live on an academy plus platform here i teach for the csi or ugc net category and you can follow me over here for regular classes you can access my free classes as well as my paid classes on this particular platform the classes which are free you can get that under the section of special classes whereas in order to access my paid classes paid live classes you have to take an academy plus subscription so do make sure that you take the an academy plus subscription to access all my paid classes which are quite organized the whole syllabus is being completed over there and the classes are quite regular over there so make sure that you take an academy plus subscription by using my referral code that is n underscore huda that's it for this thank you so much